All right, we begin with the Capitol Hill testimony <laughs> that is raising serious concerns about President Trump's denial of a quid pro quo when it comes to his dealings with Ukraine. Acting U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Bill Taylor, spent more than nine hours behind closed doors testifying before, before House lawmakers yesterday. And according to Politico, two sources in the room for Taylor's closed door testimony say there were sighs and gasps when Taylor read his opening statement. Taylor told members of Congress that the president directed officials to tie foreign aid money to demands that Ukraine open an investigation into the Biden family. This um, opening statement itself, Willie, was devastating. Yeah, for the it's available online. Everybody should read it. It's a 15 page opening statement. Taylor said Trump insisted that President Zelensky go to a microphone and say he's opening investigations of Biden and 2016 election interference and that President Zelensky should want to do this himself. Taylor wrote that EU Ambassador Gordon Sondland told him, quote, everything was dependent mm -hmm. on Zelensky making a public statement, including security assistance. In his testimony, Taylor called it a confusing and unusual arrangement for making U.S. policy toward Ukraine. Taylor told lawmakers Sondland tried to explain how President Trump was approaching the matter like a businessman, saying when a businessman is about to sign a check to someone who owes him something, he said the businessman asked that person to pay up before wow. signing the check. When Sondland testified before House investigators last week, he said he did not recall any discussions with anyone at the State Department or the White House about investigating the Biden. So, Jonathan Lemire, what uh, Bill Taylor laid out yesterday is a quid pro quo. There's no other way to put it, an explicit quid pro quo in his testimony yesterday. That's correct. And Baylor, Taylor, the top envoy to the Ukraine, was asked to go to that petition by Secretary of State Pompeo. Kept, clearly kept detailed notes and records and recounted yesterday, you know, the room was spellbound as he went through his testimony and went through the time after time where he had disturbing, as he put it, disturbing conversations with other members of the administration and the State Department, how he learned about Rudy Giuliani, and as he put it, sort of this informal parallel foreign policy to Ukraine, the exchanges with Ambassador, with Ambassador Bolton and the National Security Advisor about what was happening there as well when Bolton tried to keep things on the more regular channels, and then to spell out what is largely the mm. quid pro quo, what the president has time and time again denied, suggesting that the president would only authorize this military aid to the Ukraine if it were to carry out the investigation into corruption, and that namely meant, of course, the Bidens. And this is really, I mean, a direct, a direct line, David Ignatius, being drawn from the inside in terms of someone who was there and a part of this. What Bill Taylor described, David, how would you characterize that? Is that a crime? Well, he certainly has the elements uh, of uh, an exchange of something for, for something else of value. That, that's usually called bribery. We'll leave it to the House to decide how they want to uh, assess the, the specific charges. Yesterday's testimony, as we read it, had the feeling for me of a tipping point. Mm -hmm. it, it just was a, of a different character than what we've seen before, Mika. And I've tried to think, what is it about the way... Taylor wrote these 15 pages. As you can see from the pictures, he's a mild-mannered, kind of classic Foreign Service officer. And I think there are two things. First, he wrote it almost as a detective story. He arrives in Kiev not understanding that there's this second, as he calls it, irregular channel that's really running things. So through this narrative, he, he, he learns more and more and begins to see that these other people are running a policy that has nothing to do with our stated policy that Congress has voted. And then the, the second thing that's in, the, in these 15 pages is a, a tone of moral outrage. Here are Ukrainians literally on the front lines against Russia, fighting an undeclared war in, in the East. Taylor goes to, to the front, in effect, to see it. And he writes with real conviction that, that more Ukrainians will die because President Trump is withholding this military assistance for political purposes. He doesn't say so, but he's outraged. And I think that comes through and will come through for anybody who reads this. Eddie, the, um, Bill Taylor. Let's talk about Bill Taylor personally mm -hmm. for a few moments. Uh, Bill Taylor graduated from West Point. He served in the 101st Airborne led a combat infantry platoon in Vietnam, and for the 50 years has served the United States of America in the State Department under consistent administrations, Republican and Democrat. And yesterday, the White House's response 
to Ambassador Taylor's statement and testimony yesterday was to describe it as part of a smear campaign from far-left lawmakers and radical, unelected bureaucrats. That's how they described Ambassador William Taylor, a radical, unelected bureaucrat. But as David Ignatius just indicated, it had the feeling, his statement, when you read it, of a sea change in this. Now shifting people like Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan and most of the Republican members of the United States Senate from their positions of denial to now a position of trying to come up with an explanation. Yeah, the irony, of course, is that Mark Meadows walked out of that 10-hour uh, deposition and declared that uh, he heard, he didn't hear it in a quid pro quo, right? So he, his There's ignorance nothing was new. nothing new. It was still in place. Uh, you know, Dan Balls in his, in, his, in his column today in the Washington Post made, made it very clear. He says the question of whether this happened is now settled. Mm -hmm. The issue now is the, mm -hmm. whether the, how the president explains it and what Congress chooses to do about it. So you're right. Something has changed. The smoking gun is here. We, the evidence is clear. Now we, have to under, now we have to assess what will the Congress do. Uh, and, and I think that's where we are. So something has shifted. I think you and, and David are right. Something has shifted. The question now is, what are the next steps? I want to add one other thing, Jonathan, to the list that Mike Barnacle just read off. Bill Taylor was asked by Secretary Pompeo to return to service. So the radical, unelected bureaucrat was specifically asked by Pompeo to come out of retirement because of experience in Ukraine and work. He agonized over the decision he wrote in his opening statement. His wife voted against it. He was right. happily in retirement. So this is not a radical unelected bureaucrat. This is someone handpicked mm. by the State Department, Mike Pompeo, who's loyal to President Trump. That's right. Arguably the president's most loyal yeah. cabinet member and trusted cabinet member. And he says in his testimony that he spoke to an, an unnamed Republican mentor who said to him, if you feel like you can serve the country, even if you have misgivings, you should do yeah. so. And he went. And he's provided what is the most vivid accounting yet of what happened and yeah. potentially the most damning tale. Under the question, oath. That's right, under oath. <laughs> and now the ball certainly goes to the Republicans and say, how do you react to this? It's interesting, Mika, uh, when you read the testimony uh, and you think about what was in the testimony, what is in the testimony, does it fit under the definition of bribery or extortion? It's a good question. I mean, it, it's pressure. And these people are in the fight for their lives. It's, it's incredible. And to, to, put, and to clearly make it so that lives were on the line, to really yes. spell out that Ukraine, the the Ukrainians could die. And that's sort of the first time we've heard that. He just he describes that scene of looking over a bridge in the, at Russian soldiers at the disputed territory and, it, and thinking to himself, more Ukrainians could die because of this. It's so staggering and it really makes you take into account everything this president has said. He's serious. He means it. And he doesn't care if lives are on the line. Um, I mean, this has been proven. And by the way, this is the White House's account of what happened in the very first memo that the White House put out. And their only defense at this point, given so many things that are on the record and so many people who are going on the record, is to say, yeah, get over it. Mm. And the question is, can America get over a president potentially committing a crime in office and shaking down another foreign leader in for his own political gain. Is that who we want to be? Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.